Welcome back to another episode of Cyvex Says. I'm Ed and I'm the Technical Operations Manager at Cyvex. One of the questions I've had come in this week is talking about power graphs, power curves, how to interpret them and what do they mean. I think probably the easiest way to do this one is what we'll do is we'll go downstairs to the dyno and I'll explain there. Okay, so we're now down at the rolling road and I've brought up just a graph that was done a few months ago on a Mitsubishi Evo 5. So we're here today just to talk about power and torque and how they relate. So first of all, let's have a look at the torque curve on its own. So I will just remove the power. So what we're looking here is we have the engine RPM along the bottom and on the columns I've just both the same, we're looking at torque. So what, what is torque? Torque is a turning force. It doesn't actually imply any movement. As an example of this, if I was to hang on the end of a one foot long pole and it, the pole itself cannot move, but I'm hanging on the end of it, I'm putting roughly around 200 pounds on that and it's one foot long, so we can say that's 200 foot pounds. But it doesn't mean I've actually done anything, so there's no movement. But what is interesting about torque is at any given point in time, the torque or force on the piston, remember it's sort of, it's ignoring any work being done at this point, relates directly to the amount of airflow going through an engine. So in this instance, we can see quite a low RPM. The torque figure is pretty low. The turbo at this point hasn't done anything. As the turbo starts waking up, we see the torque is increasing. Uh, the torque is now peaking around where the turbo is making maximum boost. And as the engine efficiency starts to drop off, we see the torque or the force on the pistons dropping. It's a useful curve to see how an engine is performing, if it's, if it's doing what you'd expect insofar as airflow goes through an engine. Now let's bring onto it actually work that's being done and we will see how they relate together. This second graph here now, power is a combination of how much torque is being applied multiplied by how fast we are doing it. This is shown then as the RPM increases, our power is getting higher and higher all the way up to the top, which is where we stopped this run. Why this is useful is because power is actually a combination of doing something with a force applied behind it. Despite what people think, torque isn't what moves a car, power does. Power has involved work done, useful work in this case, moving the car, and the torque is simply the force it's doing it multiplied by the RPM and obviously that's how they relate together. Now people often talk about power and torque on the graph and if it doesn't cross at a certain RPM then the graph must be incorrect. In this case we have both scales of horsepower and torque. Let's see if you can see it across there and we go across here. Our scales are the same. If you have power and torque on the same scale, then you'll have your crossover point at 5,252 RPM. But it's not always the same if you don't have your torque and power on the same scale. And sometimes on graphs, it's useful to do that if you just want to see most detail in the graphs that it is you're looking at. This is kind of a, a quite a quick overview, really, of how power and torque relate, why they're both useful, and also shows how they relate in that torque is simply a force, doesn't involve movement. Power is the force taking into account a movement, in this case, the engine rotation. Now, the other thing you can look at is why you have some engines that produce a higher torque figure than they do a horsepower figure, or even in some parts of the tuning kind of world, forums and so on, why people try to achieve an equal torque with an equal power. It's not that straightforward to explain that in a really nice and concise way, only to say that if an engine is producing more power, or sorry, more torque than it's producing horsepower, the chances are that the engine is mostly producing all of its power under 5,252 RPM. Because by definition, if you go beyond that, power will always be higher than the torque, but if you have a turbo, for example, that's particularly small and most of that airflow is happening earlier down the RPM range, then what you can have is you can have a kind of a, an extended torque curve that might 
peak here, as the airflow restriction then starts to kick in, if you looked at the torque curve, it would start falling down quite sharply. And that could be a situation whereby you've kind of compromised or rather put more effort, if you like, on the mid part of your map rather than the, the top end of the map. But in any case, really, there's two things you ought to be looking at when trying to tune a car to make it go as fast as possible on the road. One of them is horsepower. We have the luxury of something called a gearbox on all of our cars that translates the, the RPM produced from the engine to a usable RPM, if you like, to drive the wheels. And in doing so, to make the torque curve as, uh, and power curve as wide as you possibly can. What you don't want is if you're changing gear here, to then fall back down to here if you had a particularly long ratio gear set for some reason which then meant you had to climb this power to get back going again so in some instances you can have um, a turbo that's far too large for an engine and the boost is only really starting to do what it needs to do and the last 1500 rpm that means when you it'll feel great fun to drive but in actual fact because your area under the torque curve will be quite limited, the power that it can produce in the same region will also be limited as well. It's a kind of the case of it feels fast, but in reality, it's, it's kind of not, if you like. This is me trying to, as simply as explain, quite a complicated subject to get you thinking about this, then give you an idea for what you're looking for going forward. So probably in summary, get as nice big flat torque curve as you possibly can, make the engine revers freely as it can, almost if you like to, within sensible regions as the highest RPM you can engineer it for. You have to do this properly, obviously, with camshafts and valve trains and everything else that relates to that. And that will give you the peak power or the broadest range of peak power, which is gonna make your car go the fastest. It's pretty much as simple as that. If you found this video useful, give it a like. If you have any more questions about this or any of our other products, you can ask below. And why don't you subscribe to this and keep an eye out for the next one.